What is up? This is Isaiah from yeah. Games. This is going to be our third stream for Gamorian Development. Um, I'm going to see if people are watching or try and keep an eye on when people show up. Make sure it's muted. So hopefully we have some people showing up in a bit. Uh, I was kind of rushing to get a bunch of stuff done before I started streaming. I started doing a, um, like a code request list essentially on Bitbucket so that uh, uh, we could get some code stuff done. And then I realized, oh, it's almost four o'clock. So then I had to like save it and then come to this. So, what was I doing last time? I was working on this side animation. And um, in the first episode, we did the rough sketch for her uh, run. And then the second episode, we worked on getting it kind of cleaned up and getting a lot of the motion and stuff a little more identifiable. And now, this episode, I am going to get her to this stage. So after the stream on Tuesday, I went ahead and completed her animation for her left run. Because um, I wanted to have like a reference point for you guys for when you... Um, so that way I could uh, like compare it. So right now we have, yeah, just lines, sketchy lines, and we have a nice finished product here for her left run. Got everything all prepped for her and everything, and I'll show you in Unity as well. So let's see here, play the game. As you saw Tuesday, her run animation to the right is like this. Still kind of sketchy, but it's looking a lot better. Her downrun animation's super cool. Matches really well with her idle animation. Um, this one's alright. This is the one we're working on today. But then this one is the one that I did myself. So there, the animation itself looks really cool. I like it. And this is what we're going to get to today. Um, I'm going to show you how I can like cut down a lot of my time by copy pasta and doing flat colors. Um, but there is a problem. And the problem. The, uh, the problem is that. Oops, I don't want Firefox. Yay, Gold Wolf's back. Um, the problem is if you pay attention to her left idle. Um, you can see that the shape of her eye looks like she's looking right at us, and that's kind of just bad. You don't notice it here because her eye is being covered, but you notice it here. And I got the animation to look good, so what I want to do is eventually I'll go back and I'll fix her idle animation because that's an older animation, and uh, I'll get it to look better like this. So this looks really cool. And it matches well with like her down run animation too. So this is like a final product. And I'm happy like with all the movement and all that good stuff. What's up Supreme DDT? So I'm going to get her, her, you can see her eye is more oval right here. And um, there's a bit more space between where her hair is and her ponytail. And this is actually better in the run animation because it means she has a stronger silhouette. So you can actually see the space in uh, back of her. And even with her idle animation, yeah, it wouldn't be flowing in the wind. 
but I could have a bit of white space where her neck and ponytail meet. So I like how this turned out. And I'm not going to get to, I'm not going to have time to get to editing the idle animation. I'm going to be doing that myself and then uh, next week, Tuesday, I'll just show you guys how I fixed it. But the point of this is to get it to look as good as the transition from here to here. Like, there's almost no pop, and it looks really nice. But here, there's a very noticeable pop. Like, her hair pops out backwards, there's a bigger gap, her eye changes, her her mouth changes, her hair shape changes, so there's a whole bunch of stuff that kind of just pops and it looks weird. This looks good. Yeah, there's like a tiny change with her eye position, but... I mean, the only people that are really going to be anal about this is, like, other game devs when, uh... You know, the game is done. To me, this is like a finished product for her run. Running down. This needs work. But what we're doing today, as I said, is we're going to work on this one. Because I want to get her uh, run animation to the right. Looking as good as this does. And I'm going to totally hacks it. So. What I'm going to do... Is essentially the way that I work to get this finalized here is I copied the line work from here and then I brought it down and just like replaced it over my 3D placeholder and then I took it to a finished product last night. So the uh, you can see these are my finished lines here. So I'm just gonna take those and hide my final touches layer, my background, and uh, you can see I have this folder called Four Streams, so this is stuff that you guys would be watching while we were streaming. I'm going to copy these clean lines here. Line it up. Just right. about right so I have some head bob stuff that I did too so you can see like she's way higher here her feet are higher her hands and arms are higher her whole head is way higher that's because when I was doing like the polished line drawing for this I took into account head bob and bounce in the run cycle so um, I already did that work so I don't need to do it again so that's just like super subtle to where she's at the peak of her hop in the jog her head and body kind of go up just a tiny, tiny bit, because that's kind of what happens if you're not like an Olympic runner and you keep your head super level when you run. So, yep, brought my clean lines up. And just to make sure it works, I'm going to hide the uh, old sketchy layer. Save it. I'll re-enable my Final Touches folder. That way I'm not uh, making things pop all funky. Um, I might actually have to edit her sprite sheet as well when I bring it into Unity. Because when I was editing her animation here, I made her a little bit wider with her leg stance. And the way that her um, tail feathers follow behind her. And then the fact that I also like moved her body up for the peaks of the hop and the jog. Uh, I had to edit her um, her actual sprite sheet in Unity, so that'll be good for you guys to watch that as well. Some actual work within Unity. Alright, so that's it.
for getting her clean lines in, so now she look should look good. I mean, her face will show, which is fine. And you can see what I was talking about. I need to fix her sprite sheet. Her feet are cut off. Her head is cut off. Um, I guess I don't need to fix it, fix it, fix it horizontally, but I need to fix it uh, vertically because her lines are getting cut. You can see in this one they don't because I fixed it already uh, last night. It is really hot today. I wanted to like do this stream naked, but I don't know if you guys want to see me naked. I'm just sitting here sweating. Oh yeah. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to fix the sprite sheet in Unity. And the best way to do this actually is to just look at her run animation. Right. So you can preview her animation like this. <sighs> yeah, I want to wear a tank top right now. I might do that. I'm just sweating balls right now. But it's getting to that time of year. It's uh, April. We're almost to May. Hawaii gets real hot in May. Then from May to August, so not a surprise. It's just uh, starting to warm up. We had a really nice, cool evening last night, though, so I appreciated that. Actually, put on my slippers and a sweatshirt. It's nice and cozy. Drink some tea. All right, so go to Anaya. Go to her sprite sheet and edit her sprite. Um, I'm gonna be clicking on things kind of fast when I work in Unity because I like know what I'm doing. I, I'll uh, I'll explain it to you guys. So. This is the hierarchy. This is basically all the things that are in here. I've got the camera, which is actually way the hell out here, which is fine because I created a script that follows Anaya. We have um, just some effects work that I did. Then we have Anaya, which is basically the hero unit, and her hero unit has a whole bunch of stuff in it. So it has like a particle collider that I created so that when she runs into um, like waterfalls or like rain or something, it'll actually bounce and drip off her head. And I can demonstrate that in a bit if I remember. We have this like reticle manager, which was a legacy thing, um, but I didn't want to delete it because I'm not super code savvy with what some of our coders have done. And then we have this orb holder. This is stuff that I created because... Um, when you press play, you can see that her orbs like rotate around in a certain way. Like I have her fire orb going in this tight circle. I have the storm orb going in a really tight circle. And then I have the water or the uh, fluid. I need to say it right. So ember, storm, and fluid. Her fluid orb kind of goes in a nice loose circle. So this is actually all code that I wrote. And... Uh, I wrote all this stuff in like a day, so I was pretty damn happy that I made this stuff up in a day. Not hardly knowing a damn thing about coding. And they, uh, they follow her like... They follow her very fluidly. Like, you can see they have this like lag. And I'll go over to some like ground so you can see it. But like, they kind of like... They move very soft, and their motion and stuff is all really nice, so... When I did that, I was freaking out to my wife, Cherish. I was like, look what I did! <laughs> Being like a kid, uh, figuring something out. But, yeah, I was really happy with that. And even though they, like, kind of bob around, they still follow their path. So you can see that the um, fluid orb still, like, even though it bobs around nicely when you move, it's still kind of continuing its initial path in a large orbit around Anaya. Let's go back out here. Um, so, yeah, that's all the orbs and stuff, but it's pretty complex because I had all these different, like, scripts based off of certain things doing certain things, and I did it, like, eight months ago, so I can't remember anything I did. Uh, but I got it to work. Uh, and then I have her shadow circle, which is her shadow. And that's the entirety of Anaya right now. Her orbit is kind of funky because her orbit encapsulates where the orbs are and where she is 
But for when we start doing code and stuff, for like, you know, based on an ice position, it'll probably be like this or this. Uh, and then we have like, big light source, background music which is disabled, we got all our lights. All our point lights that we're using to light the scene, so you can actually like move these around and it will affect the sprites. Uh, which was awesome, because a lot of sprites come in with um, just like a default lighting system. And with that default lighting system, they don't get lit like this. So it'd be more flat like that. When you have it uh, changed to this like sprite lighting system, you know, this is awesome where you can like have these lights moving around in the environment, script it, and um, you know, it lights everything, including the characters, like zoom in to poot. Like, he gets darker and lighter. I can get it, like, super intense. Or really dark. So. That's working. Uh, a bunch of... Um, effects. Right now it's freaking madness. <laughs> this is not optimized at all. Uh, but... Uh... This is probably where, like, all our perf is gonna come from. Perf stands for performance. Uh, which it, you basically have to do perf work usually at like kind of the end of the project after you get a bunch of stuff working You got to cut back on stuff So it looks good now, but when I get to perf work like closer to shipping, you know in a year or two um, This is a lot of stuff that's gonna get edited So you can see this is just ass loads of overdraw uh, Terrible 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 performance but it's kind of okay because, you know, the rest of the game is really just sprites and, like, trees and stuff. Like, it's just this tree. Um, so the rest of it's really quite simple. So a lot of the perf is just going to be effects, which actually means I'm going to be able to have some pretty cool effects. But I just won't be able to have it as insane as this billion overdraw. I uh, got some ambient sounds for, like, birds and stuff. And it's all 3D, so, you know, you won't hear the birds unless you're close to the tree. And then got lots of all this stuff. I won't get too deep in it, because I actually want to get into doing the animation. But I just figured I would give you a quick, brief breakdown on what that stuff is. Um, so I'll stop playing and get back to her animation, fixing her sprite sheet. So what I did was I clicked on her, click on the hierarchy, and then this is the inspector window where it shows all the things about her, like all her colliders, um, scripts that's attached to her. Uh, this is another script I created, which is a dynamic sprite sorting layer, which is where if she runs behind certain objects, she is behind it, and if she runs in front of it, she's in front. So you can see she's behind the tree, now she's in front. So that was another script that I made for myself, and I was very happy that I made that in a day as well. So you can see she's still behind all these leaves back here. You can see her but inside the trees saying hello. Hi guys. <laughs> and uh, now she's in front. See she's in front of the roots, in front of the tree. And then there's like a threshold that I created. She's behind it. You know, it doesn't look good for the roots, but that's okay. So yeah, I click on her and then this is her sprite renderer, which brings me to her sprite sheet. And then when I click that, this is all her sprite stuff. I can click sprite editor. This is her sprites. So this is her idle animation, and I don't want that. I want her run animation. There we go. So this is what I'm working on in Photoshop. And when I was talking about things were getting cut off, you can see this is getting cut off. Um, so I need to fix her head getting clipped, especially here, and I need to fix her feet getting clipped. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy my, sp um, really funky. So I'm going to set them all to 400 tall first. And that sells. So, it's going to be a 306 by 400. Um, and you can see that it's kind of like going into this other cell up here. If cells go into other cells, that's okay. Uh, 
um, but you don't want it picking up like her toe. I gotta remember how exactly I did this because when you edit cells, this is actually really uh, nitpicky work. And if you break it, then your animation is gonna look really funky. So I'm gonna set them all to 400 tall first. And then I have to lower the Y translate on the cell on all of them together. Hello, Cherish, my wife. The one I give uh, all sorts of loving to. Alright, so now I have all these cells. My Y off on these? Yeah, you can see that. My Y is off by a couple pixels per cell. Which is not what you want. So you can see my Y on all these cells is 393. That means that each cell is exactly um, at the Y axis of 393 pixels and these are not perfect. So I'm gonna move one of these down. This one down. I can do it like this. So 1245. I gotta edit this to 1245. Do that for all of them. While trying to not move the cells while I'm actually selecting them. They are funky shoes. She does not have hooves. So the reason I drew them like this is because she basically was born and raised by this Avduin race, like bird people. And they're all birds, and she's not. She's a little girl. So, um, I made her attire to kind of like resemble bird-like elements. So like uh, bird feet, or like a bird talon. Like that. And then she has like these tail feathers on her dress. So even though she's not actually like, you know, a bird, her clothes kind of make her bird-esque. Thought that was kind of like a neat idea. And I just, I like the shape. Like, I like having that extra little hook on her toe. Twelve forty-five. See here, 1245 here is not low enough. So, I have to lower it, and then I might have to increase my H, which is my cell height. So let's try 1237 for all these. Okay, so that works. And I'm eventually going to have to edit my pivot to... Oh, I shouldn't have to ev edit the... Um, the Y pivot. Because I'm kind of just... Her Y shouldn't be changing, but I'm going to have to fix her X pivot. Because that's what's most noticeable. Oh, you're coming home so early. So 1237, and the width on her cells is fine, I just need to adjust their positioning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to, oops, What's this. Is that a 15 pixel difference? That fucks with the width. So... Ten pixels. Well, I have to do that for all these. So this will put this at 1400. Put this at 1060. See that catches her toe now. 720. Eighty. 
Oop, no, not 38. You can see what happens there is uh, the cell position is based off of, you know, what you have in here. And 40. So let's apply that and see how it looks. So that's going to update every frame in her animation. Let's play. So you can see she's no longer longer getting clipped out on the top. She's not getting clipped out on the bottom. She's not getting cli clipped out on her front toe. So now she's not having any clipping with her sprite sheet. But what's really important is always checking in the game if I have popping from her idle animation. So I need to check like the location of her nose. So currently what's happening is she's having a bit of a shift backwards. Her nose is going back. Her hips are shooting back. That's not that bad though. Ooh, someone's hosting. I have special colors or er, sounds now. So now I, uh, I know when someone's doing a certain thing. If any of you donate a dollar, you guys should check out the sound I have. Seriously. Check out the... If someone donates a dollar, it's really cool. Really not that bad of a pop. But I think I need to move her forward a little bit. Oh, so, let's see here. Doing the same thing, editing her sprite sheet. And what I can do is edit her pivot. This is where I was saying I need to fix her X pivot. So I'm going to scoot it back to like right there. Point six. All right, there. So now she should have less of a pop when I want her f her head to go forward because when you run, you actually do kind of like lean your head into it. So we should be seeing a pop of her head going forward a little bit, at least with her hair. I feel like I could probably do it a little more. I've got to hold my hand where her thumb is here. Or put my finger where her nose is. Yeah, I feel like I can make her... I can push it a little more. So, edit her sprite sheet again. Do I have it on this? 3-8? Oh yeah, so that if I put it at like a 6-2. I bet that'll be pretty good. Or wait, no. Six. I want a five eight.
There. Now she's kind of leaning into it a little bit when she starts running. What's most important is getting your, like, shoulders to kind of be on the right spot, because when you... S or at least, like... Eh, whatever, I'm not a master animator. That feels a little better. Kind of like how... I feel like I could push this one a little bit more, but there's, like, a tiny bit of a lean into it. But, um, you can see this is the line work and actually looks pretty cool. Transitions nicely from left to right. There's a little bit of a um, bug that we gotta fix ourselves where she's having like a, a priority with her idle. And sometimes when I move you can see that she has her idle animation popping up for like a half second. See that? That's just a bug that needs to get fixed. But, we're getting a lot of her run animation done. So now we're gonna go back into Photoshop. And... Wrap up her uh, colors and all that. So as I said before, I have these like things broken into nice layers. And... Let's hold her. I'm going to start coloring for you guys. And I could just, like, do a copy-paste for some of this, and I might just for the sake of time. Um, because coloring this actually takes a while, and it's kind of boring. So, as I said, I have everything separated into their own layers. And I just paint away. What have you guys done today? Give me something to talk about. So, uh, you're not all bored watching me paint hair. I have her ponytail and the uh, hair on top of her head separated into different layers uh, just because that's how I had it set up for her um, down run animation because her hair was behind her tunic. So for consistency's sake, even though I don't really need to do it that way, I just am. And her ponytail's almost done. I'm gonna copy the um, tunic base layer up here because that uh, 
probably one of the ones that'll take a bit longer to paint because there's a lot of like shapes and curves and stuff for every frame. So I want to be able to get you guys like a full final version. Yeah. Hey, someone donated money. That's the sound for donating money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for giving us a dollar, Miss DJM. You made my day just to be able to hear that. I hope you enjoyed that sound too. And if for some reason you didn't hear, I would love to play it for you. Um, so you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just grabbing the paintwork that I did, and then I'm just moving it up, and I'm going to put it into place as needed. Right there. It's good. Oh, the sound was soft. How about I play you the sound full blast? Add my audio fuckery file here or folder. There you go. You ready? I'm gonna make sure that OBS is on uh, full speaker. Oh, that's why. Increase my desktop bit sound a bit. Try this. Ew. Yeah. Let's play it on repeat. You ready? Ew. 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 <laughs> That's what you get for giving a dollar. Hopefully a smile on your face. That's what you get. So then I have this like tunic uh, deets folder, which is basically like um, the uh, front of her tunic and her tail feathers. You can see that on her front ran run animation here. I'm also going to copy the shadows that I painted when I get to that step because getting the shadows to look how I want it actually takes a lot of time. Surprise, surprise. So I want to show you guys the process of me painting, but I also don't want to like waste a ton of time and uh, like redoing critical work that I had to do before. And um, the reason it's really easy for me to paint these colors within the bounds of the tunic is uh, uh, how I have my layers set up. I have, um, this is basically like a, an op opacity lock on the layer that you're currently painting. So if I unlock it, you can see like here, I like painted way outside the lines. But when you do an opacity lock layer, it locks it to what was painted below. So I'm really meticulous on what I paint on my tunic base layer so that when I paint in the details, it never exceeds beyond where I had meticulously painted the base. So that I can paint the details um, freely, not worry about it.
All right, so her undershirt, I'm gonna copy that too because I was very meticulous on how I painted her feet, which is part of her undershirt layer. It's just the same color. Good, yeah. Looks like it's all in place. Alright. I'll paint the skin because the skin wasn't too hard. And uh, once I get a lot of this done, I'm going to have to make this run animation a little unique. Because from this side of her head, you don't see her face. So I'm going to tweak the line work a little bit so that her face is hidden. That's quite easy to do. The work I did last night, or uh, Tuesday night, or yeah, it was last night, was more difficult. Because I had to get her face to look good. And if you don't have to show her face, then it's easy. It's just like a couple lines for her hair. You don't have to like match eye position, mouth, nose, shape, etc, etc. Um, so right now I don't have music playing. I've seen a lot of streamers have like music play as they do dev stuff just for the sake of entertainment. And the reason I don't have any music is because Twitch will mute it. And if I'm like trying to tell you guys how to do something within the period that it gets muted, then you know when I export it to YouTube, then there's a big chunk of muted audio. And that sucks. So I'm opting to not play music, so if there's a whole bunch of silence, awkward silence, then you know how you can fix that? Ask me a question. I can talk about it while I work. Or you can listen to music, but for the sake of fun you could also just ask a question. Yeah, I'm uh, happy you're watching. I'm glad you guys found me. Like to get word out as much as possible, because uh, I'm doing this for the sake of others to like learn from what I'm doing. And that's why I'm doing it on Twitch too, because I want people to ask like, "Well, how the hell did you do that? Or why are you doing that?" And it's easiest to do it, like, you know, while I'm doing it. So then I can just give a live demo as I'm working. So you're saying, like, most people on Twitch will play music and have their stuff get muted?
The wicked owl with the or the uh, cool owl with the wicked dance moves is Poot. Poot is like her uh, kind of like her foster parent in this game, where he's the one you can go to to like learn about most all whatever questions you may have about the game, and um, you'll like when you enter the dream state with Anaya to like go out and fight with your pets and all that, you end up like kind of falling asleep near him and so he's just kind of like her watcher and her mentor he's like a goofball the uh, Avduin people are very diverse in their uh, uh, personalities so we have like Yoji who's kind of like uh, got a bit of like a samurai attitude very dedicated to loyalty and uh, defending like very militant in a way you got Rockmo, who's a grumpy ass old man who just kind of like wants to swear at you and tell you to get off his lawn. And then we have a couple more planned uh, that are actually going to be based off of some of our $50 donors. And I actually already like. Um, hey, we got a follower. You got, you got my grandfather clock sound. Love that sound. Um. Yeah, some of the $50 donors are uh, going to be... Well, they're all going to be in the game, but some of them are going to be Avduin characters, and uh, there'll be stuff that you'll talk to. Oh, hey, what's up, Tana Bear? You got to uh, you gotta pester Hannah to host me. I tried telling her to. She's got, like, 4,000 friends on here. So, if you can get Hannah to host me with 4,000 followers, then maybe I'll be a cool person. Okay, so that's all her skin. Now, her hair is also tedious, so I'm going to copy that, because we're at about 50 minutes for the stream right now. Yay, thank you for the host. Uh, I'm going to copy the hair from this layer, or this uh, lower animation here. Flip it. Pop it. Twist it. Sniff it. Hug it. Kiss it. About right there. Thank you for hosting. And uh, ponies, that's something else. I don't know. I don't want to mess with it. And then I got these uh, eye whites. Just paint that just because. That's not that hard. I want to try and make this worth your guys' time watching me paint. So, Monster Cat is like a musician, or like a playlist. I know Cherish is coming home soon, so the dogs are probably going to go ape shit when she comes home. I'll try and mute my mic when that happens. Got a little hairband for her hair. Six 
some of these holes in her hair. What's up, Boyd? All right, so there's some flat colors. I'm gonna continue to kind of like clean some of these spots in her hair. Uh, it doesn't really matter right now because I'm gonna end up like completely covering her face in a second. So, what ifs? But this just shows you that uh, we have our basic stuff in. These final touches back on, and. Um, so what I'm going to do now is this. What is that? Something in the colors. Undershirt? Yes. I don't know where that came from. Alright, so, oops. I'm going to select the opacity of all these things I just painted. Line work. I'm going to multiply it by the selection for just this line. So now I can add that to this mask. Now she has a gradient. Yeah, I want to eat food. I'm freaking hungry. I'm just trying to sustain myself on beer until the stream's over and then I'm going to eat like a maniac. Two is what I want. This is her top gradient. Seems about accurate. All right, let's just save that and see how it looks. All right, so now we should have some flat colors. Oh, my butt's getting numb. Uh, should have some flat colors on Anaya, uh, with a little bit of a gradient for her right run animation. Yes, ask questions and I will try to answer them, or I will help you clarify what you are trying to ask. Ta-da! Now we got uh, her running this direction, got her running this direction, got her running that way, this way, this way, that way. You can see uh, she has shadows going this way, she does not have shadows this way. And that's okay, because I need to uh, redraw her hairline anyways. And her ear actually needs to be covered as well. So, I'm gonna do that. But that's just to show we got, uh, we got something going here. Go to my clean lines. Right run fix. Yep. 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 Settings, settings. Thanks, Boyd. You look nice too. So her hair kind of goes like that. Over the ear. Like that. 
think it'd be cool if she still had this little, like, bit of hair. So that's another thing I'd have to fix with the idle animation. Um, so from designing her in Photoshop to a full animation, it's a lot of sketch work. So if you actually go to my YouTube, I'll link it for you real quick. Um, the very first step I did is I have these 3D placeholders that I made, so I actually animated her in 3D. So that's these things you see uh, here. I actually did her animation in 3D. This was just like a block out with the shapes. And then um, I draw over them with a really rough sketch work. And I'll link you the YouTube video real quick. Uh, for the first Gamaria dev stream. I can fix her head bob first. So this, you'll, you'll probably like this. This should answer your question completely. Link it in chat. Um, so when you open that, you'll immediately see that all, the only animation I have in that video is her down run. Uh, I don't have her left or right. So in that first stream I did last week, I go from the placeholder 3D animation that I had to doing a rough sketch within that first stream. And then the stream I had on Tuesday, I cleaned up the lines, so that's episode 2. And then now on episode 3, um, I'm coloring her. So I'm trying to make this all like chronological. Uh, uh, well, technically, yes, they are created frame by frame. So if you look in Unity at my animation sheet here, like her run right animation, these are all the frames. And then when you play the animation, it's just cycling through the frames. So I am actually doing a frame-by-frame -frame animation. Um, I hope that kind of answers it. What's up, Raviolio? Uh, continue to elaborate on your question if that does not answer your question. My dogs are going to freak out, so I'm going to mute my mic. All right, they should be chill now.
Hey, you brought in a uh, streamer of yours since you were hosting. That's cool. If uh, Church runs and buys me more beer, I'm down to do this for more than an hour and a half. I can, like, just keep working on stuff. Especially if, like, we get a, a gathering of folks that want to watch. I'm all for, like, gathering a following more than I am for, like, ending the stream. Um, and I know some people like to stream for very long periods of time. Like, initially I'm kind of, like, meh on that, but... I mean, if, like, if that's what people enjoy, then as long as I have my beers, then I'll be good. Aw, oh, son of a bitch. I fucked all this up. I was doing all these drawings on the wrong layer. Except for that one. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, I know there's a way to fix that in the newer Photoshop versions, but whatever. Yeah, I, yeah, I need more PBRs. Cherish. You wanna be- you wanna- Don't- come here! Yeah, and I'm out. <laughs> well, I didn't know if I was gonna do this longer or not. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I can't go- No, yeah, yeah. No, I can't- I can't stream too long, guys, because we're actually going to, like, a thing tonight. So I'll do this as, like, a normal length stream. So, when are we leaving, Cherish? Okay, so I'll do this for like another 45 minutes. But to, to be honest, I'd rather spend my whole life with you guys on the internets. Um... Yeah, I also didn't get a notice that it went through. Did you do it on the Patreon, or did you do it via the uh, one-time donation thing on our Twitch? Because the Patreon is not linked up to the donation thing. And Patron is also month-to-month, -month. so Patron is more like a help our monthly bills kind of thing than a one-time donation. Really? Uh, how much did you donate? I have a minimum of, of a dollar for it. Yeah, I have a, a Miss DJM for a dollar, but I don't have Supreme DDT. So if you gave less than a dollar then it wouldn't show up. Yeah, for one book. Uh, I'll check my Twitch alerts real quick and see if it even showed up. It doesn't even show that you did it on my uh, thing. It says that Miss DGM was the last donor. So, for whatever reason, it didn't go through. And, uh, as far as I know, that's not on my end. I think that's like a Twitch Alerts, uh, Twitch thingy. But yeah, it shows that it, uh, does not exist. 
I'll show you here. So Miss DGM, she gave a dollar, and then these were all just tests that I did. Uh, so it only shows that she was the last one. So now I'm going to paint her hair here. And, oops. Full current layer. Here we go. So I just gotta erase her eye whites and resave it. Just got a text message from a 380 number asking if I have any Pokemon cards just because. Oh, a 360 number. I don't know this person. 360 something 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 asking me for Pokemon cards. Okay, so that side's covered. And let's resave it, see how she looks. Um, the reason I wanted to make her a girl instead of a boy because from an art standpoint, um, let me show you a little something. Uh, well, I'll just explain it instead of like trying to find a perfect picture, but um, I liked Tails from Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on Sega Genesis, and I liked that um, like when he was running, his like tails would like kind of propeller in a way when he was running, and I just liked that whole uh, the motion of how he was running, so it was a combination of that plus um, me loving Zelda, but not wanting to like completely copy Link, like making almost what Anaya could be, like a female version of Link in my universe of Gamoria. Um, and then the larger arc of the story, which I do not want to reveal, as I said in uh, like yesterday or the day before, uh, she encounters some really creepy ass shit and to me like a young girl feels more innocent than a young boy so when you have this young girl dealing with super creepy ass shit it's uh almost more like a to me it's like a shocker versus like a young boy um really not that complex beyond that 
just like art direction and then like story inspiration. But I'm not like some SJW that's like, you know, screw do screw white guys and their privilege or whatever the hell that stuff is they say. Visually I just think she's cooler. I like her ponytail. I like that she has a dress. I like that she has some tail feathers. So I just like the visuals. I like the flowiness and how she can look. And uh, no, I don't have Pokemon cards. I sold them all. I seriously have no idea who that person is, so I am going to have to like text and respond and ask who that is. Oh, so I saved this. Did I bring it in? Yes. Okay, let's play the game. Okay. Ta -da. So there's a little bit of work that can go on, but that's because her idle animation is nasty. And uh, I don't have any of her shadows in right now, but I do here. So what I can do is I can actually add a little extra line, and that will create some extra fluid movement. That'll be really easy, and then I'm going to copy over the shadows and try and wrap this up in 15-20 minutes. Call it good for today. And the choice of red hair was a game design choice because um, it's easy to follow very bold colors for your character, like red and blue and green. Blue hair and green hair is a little more, you know, fantastical. So the next obvious choice was having her be a redhead. So it'll be easier for you to follow the red orange of her hair in the game space. So let's just try that, see how that looks. Uh, yes, I want to. I've been like super busy this pa past couple nights saying like, Oh, I'm gonna get on, oh, I'm gonna get on. But then I don't. And if I do get on, it's because I'm playing the WoW Legion Alpha. Just still testing stuff out that's actually pretty fun. Screw you, Photoshop. Make a noise. Um, but yeah, I'm down for whatever. So we're gonna leave in like an uh, like 30 minutes, and we'll probably be out for a couple hours. So I'll be back at probably like midnight your time. Can't remember if I copied it. All right. So now she has a little line for animation, it's just like a little something just to kind of give it a tiny bit extra motion. It also is now more cohesive. Um, and I might actually remove this thing in front. Because that left chunk of hair is what sticks out a little more. So I'm going to remove that. That'll actually line up a bit better with her idle animation. So I'll mask this out. Actually...
That's not what the problem is. Problem is, should be doing this. Should be going like this. No, that's what I need to do. You shouldn't be seeing the skin of her forehead. I need to clean these lines out. That. You guys excited for the uh, Bernie Sanders talk in New York? I am. There we go, that's what I need. That. I wouldn't say uh, Bernie Sanders talk, but the debate still pretty shitty that basically you have a bunch of delegates and super delegates that are going against how people voted in the caucus because they're, you know, political fuckers and they just vote for whatever they want and they don't actually represent the people, which is a uh, questionable voting system. I don't want to get too political. It's funny, America's all about, like, spreading democracy in all the countries that need it. And this is, like, one of the most corrupt democracies in the world where your vote doesn't actually matter until, um, like, the stuff in November, but even then it's up to the Electoral College. So they basically just make loophole after loophole for people to fuck it over if they really want to. Was it yesterday? In New York? I just haven't watched it yet then. Alright, so that should be more accurate because she has this, yeah, so see here her hair extends beyond her forehead. So now I fix that so it extends beyond her forehead, so that should be more correct. Yeah, that looks better. So, like I said, I still have to fix her idle animation because her idle animation is old and this looks better. And you can see that little, like, hair piece, that little sideburn sticking out, kind of like how she has on this here. It's like a cool little detail, which is not uh, non-existent for her uh, idle. So I just got to fix her side idle animations because they're old and ugly. So let's see here, 522, got about 10-15 minutes. I'm going to bring in her shadows and do any other major tweaks 
I need to do before I eat, and then we gotta leave. So, the shadow stuff, as I said, is rather tedious, so I'm going to copy most of it over, but then I have to fix it, because I always have my shadow coming from the top uh, left. As you can see here, her clothing gets into full shadow here, and then I have it like full extend into light, because it's like going side to side. Uh, but it's always going to be in the top left. So, what I do is, since the light's going to be in the top left again... It might be worth just redoing the shadow. That, that'll be a good, like, final thing. I'm just going to repaint the shadows from scratch because I need to. Because the light direction's going to be different. There's no point in copying it. So... Oh, that's right. Copy the mask. Now I can paint. Thanks for watching, Boyd. Yeah, I might not be back on. Or I might not be on when you get back. I just really hope Bernie wins because it's quite clear that the uh, masses want it. And uh, I hope I don't sound insane when I say this, but if it comes down to Trump and Hillary, I might not actually vote for Hillary because if it's really going to be between those two, I might actually bank on chaos completely unhinging the country. Voting for the worst possible candidate to potentially end what is currently happening in bot politics. That sounds absolutely insane. But if it really gets down to those two, it's like... Am I just gonna vote for someone who's just gonna perpetuate the issue because she's just taking money from banks all the time? Or vote for a freaking psycho who would just like screw things up so bad that someone would have to re hit the reset button. And uh, that actually pains me to say because I think Trump is a frickin' psychotic idiot. But if Bernie does not make it, then there is absolutely no good choice to vote. Because uh, to me, Hillary literally stands for everything that is wrong with uh, being bought in politics. Yeah, I like these uh, wind chimes, and that's why I have the uh, grandfather clock sound for when people become a follower too. Because um, uh, it's like stuff that reminds me of my childhood, going to my grandparents' house and It'd be windy out in West Oregon, or Eastern Oregon, and they just had like grandfather clocks and wind chimes, and it just reminds me a lot of my childhood. So, that's the cool thing about working on your own project, is you can pull in your own, like, personal um, experiences and share those with others. 
And honestly, like, I'm totally down to just listen to these wind chimes for long periods of time as I work, because it's just relaxing. The last bit of my beer. I gotta wrap this up. I'm so hungry. Yes, yeah, so Anaya will actually have the ability to swing her flute. I'll show you her flute from the patron page. It's essentially how she summons oh. her pets. Uh, she'll be able to swing that and whack things around with it. So you can see here she's like playing her flute. This is in her dream and that's how she like summons her pets. And um... So she won't have like a sword like Zelda, so her own abilities will be, or her own ability to kill things will be rather weak because she's just beating things with a flute. So it's going to be focused on uh, her pets doing like all the fight and the way that we're also planning to have the uh, health system work where she has hearts like Zelda, but they have essentially a, a fatigue system and can be resummoned. So they're going to be the ones that are go you're going to want to control to absorb the brunt of combat. So you're going to want to try to keep Anaya out of it. Um, but she will be able to like swing her flute. And uh, it'll do like a minimal damage. Because it also, we've just thought about like what would it feel like if she couldn't swing something. And that just, uh, the idea of it felt bad. Because uh, when you play like any game, it's just second nature to be like, how do I attack? Like, you can't tell someone like, oh, you can't attack. Um, I mean, yeah, there are some games like that, but in a game like this, people just be like, what do you mean? I can't attack. This is like an action game. How do I fight? And, uh, so she will have basic functionality to engage in combat. Um, but you will want to focus on using your, uh, real-time abilities with your pets. And her, uh, it'll have a similar knockback system like Zelda as well, so when she hits something, it'll kind of knock it back. Um... That way you can focus on, like, if you have to hit something with Anaya, then uh, it'll be, like, kind of in a way to knock them back and kind of stun the enemy so that you can finish them off with a strong pet spill. And that is all just going to come down to lots and lots and lots of playtesting. Um, I'm excited for all that because playtesting is really fun. That's something I really enjoyed when I was at Sucker Punch and Bungie. Like, having the game at, like, a very basic uh, state of, like, functionality where you can... They at least allowed you to shoot your spells at trash cans and, um, you know, whatever. Just really basic stuff. But allows you to kind of just run around in the world and attack things randomly. So that's kind of where we're going the same thing. is like, I want to be able to get the basic stuff set up so she can run around, she can whack shit, 
she can like cut some grass down, she can summon her pets, she can fight a couple little enemies, but then like gameplay after that is gonna be a little more subdued and we're gonna just focus on building out the world and the lore and stuff and then uh, do the gameplay like as we build all that stuff out with it. But we want to get that baseline started so that it's fun for us to like test all of our code and stuff. So some of our first code requests are uh, are things that we want code to be working on is basically getting that basic functionality in. We used to have pet summoning and all that stuff working, but we've had uh, changes in coders over the life of this project the past two years, and I didn't want to be like disrespectful or do any illegal activity in using uh, code from a previous coder that had no longer wanted to work on the project. So we kind of just scrapped it and agreed that, okay, we'll start from scratch. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So we didn't have to scrap any of the art because, you know, I'm doing all the art. And I'm not going to be stupid with it either, like, oh, we're changing the complete game direction, let's get rid of all the art. You know, I'm not uh, an idiot like that. And I know art can always be salvaged if things change. Unlike sometimes, uh, larger companies can encounter those problems of just scrapping things entirely. Thankfully, when I was at Bungie and Sucker Punch, that wasn't the case, but I know, like, from what I uh, heard at, like, Naughty Dog with, um, what was it? Uh, was it two? Number two or three of their games? Like, they had to completely remove, like, 30% of the game. All the art and stuff people just slaved on for, like, years, just because they are like, uh, design's not ready for this, let's just get rid of it. So, I'm on the art side of things where I say, that's retarded, how about we just rehash it and use it in other ways? Because then, yeah, I could get into a huge, like, the, uh, side rant of AAA inefficiencies, managers, managing managers, managing managers, crunch, etc, etc. Feeling unfulfilled in your work. Five thirty-five. So what do I got? Got one more frame. So I'll try and get this looking good. Alright, so here, back, arm, oh, I gotta fix that ugly, uh, skin. And, front, front, oh, I get this here. Front. Your arms. Your arms. Face and hair, arms, and the front. Legs, and last one. Yeah, that's where it's like. There's a perfect middle ground in the game industry where you want to get into, you don't want to get into a huge AAA company. Generally not a good idea to come work for someone like me, because <laughs> we're super fucking poor. Uh, so you don't want to go like balls deep indie. You want to get that like perfect medium where it's like they got the culture and um, 
values of an indie team, but then they got the uh, funding and structure and uh, backing of like a larger studio. So someone or a company that's like 50 people is perfect because it's big enough to where, you know, they're able to pay the salaries of 50 people. So they got some funding. Uh, the project's probably, you know, going to make some waves. They got the funding for some marketing. But then they're not so big that uh, they just they lose their heart, they lose their soul, and uh, I enjoyed most of my time at Bungie, so and there's nothing for me to shit talk about them. But I do feel like that they expanded so much that they might they probably lost the soul that they once had. Because uh, when I was there, I knew a lot of people that had been at Bungie for you know, like 10, 15 years when they were still working on it, like Halo 2. They're like, oh yeah, it was just like 30, 40 of us, you know, working on this project. And we could, you know, they made, they, all their individual input uh, made a big difference. But then when they started staffing up for Destiny, they like tripled in size in a year. And now they're not even doing all the work anymore. They're outsourcing to multiple companies and Activision's taking over a whole bunch of it, so... Yeah, that just uh, kind of leaves the whole, like, you lose the soul and become a corporate sweat house. You make money for your corporate leaders. But that being said, uh, I still loved what I did at Bungie, and I love the people that I worked with, and I respected them very much. Main reason I left was other life reasons. Hated Seattle, hated the weather. Hated commuting. Uh, there was a lot of crunching, so they, yeah, that's kind of blamed on Bungie. But um, overall, like, I was not displeased with Bungie. I liked working with the people I worked with. All right, so we got shadows going, so let's save that. And uh, if this is looking okay, then I'm going to end the stream. It's not going to look fantastic on my first run, but it should look pretty decent. Because I kind of have a, a fair grasp on like what I need to do for the shadows. Alright, so now we should have some shadows. And you'll see there's a shadow pop on her neck because, as I said, the idle animation is old. And this new animation is new. You can see I have her whole, in, her whole neck in shadow here. So, same thing here. So, how does that look? Just kind of like going side to side. Alright, yeah. Uh, yeah, my wife's from Oahu. Uh, she was born and raised here. And uh, we came back here uh, to start our own businesses. So, my wife cherishes into letterpress. She worked for letterpress companies in Seattle. That's what she did in school. She has a couple letterpress machines, and she came back here, and now she owns Jiu Jiu Press, which is a letterpress company in Oahu. She does a lot of custom work. She can hear I'm talking about her, and now she's coming. Um, talking about me. Yeah. Uh, so, she does, like, uh, letterpress stuff, wedding invites, and custom prints. Um... So we came here because her family's here, and uh, uh, so we're here for familial support, because starting your own business is madness. Okay, so, but look at this. See how nice this transitions, like, down to left to right? Like, that looks... I'm really happy with this, at least with the silhouette, um, and, like, the little details. So I feel like when she's, like, running around and stuff in the environments, I'll stop the game and replay it. Like, I feel like that's pretty good. It's not top of the line pro work because I'm not a pro animator. I'll get to this shitty sprint animation eventually. So, see, that looks cool. She's like running in her environment. I'll lock my uh, camera so we can kind of see a little better. I have, this is where I was talking about earlier. I have a camera thing set up. So I can set my extremities. So currently it's locked to this. So left bounds Y. 
it's going to be up. Right bounds Y is going to be up. And this is what's most important. Top bounds. Bottom bounds. And I can disable what I have created is called editor free cam. And so the cam will be locked within the boundaries that I have just set. So it will be locked within these four orbs. Disable editor free cam. And you'll see Anaya running in from the screen on the right. FPS is kind of shitty right now, but that's okay. Why is it so bad? I'm actually gonna fix the uh, bounds real quick. Let's see, up bounds. Oh, that's fine. Bottom bounds is way too high. So, yeah, my FPS is poop right now. Yeah, it's poop. Uh, this is not pixel art. Trevor9999, thank you for joining us. I'm just about to end the stream, but yeah, this is not pixel art. This is hand-painted. Something you would expect in, like, Bastion or, uh, like, Supergiant games, uh, Transistor, or, like, a Blizzard game. This is hand-drawn, hand-painted. As I said, she uh, her animation has like a bit of a weird delay, so she looks like she's floating. Uh, but that's just a bug, so we gotta fix that. And I apologize for the poor FPS right now. It just pops up every now and then. But we got most of it working, so that was the whole point of it. That was the point of this stream. We got her right animation working. Matches with like this one. So... Yeah. Ooh, we got a new follower. There's the grandfather clock. Yeah, Poot's fucking awesome. I already had uh, someone say that uh, when the game is live that they want to cosplay as him. <laughs> um, so, I feel like that's good for now. I need to eat, and I need to get ready because we got a thing we got to go to tonight. We're doing this twice a week right now. I am totally down to do it for more than twice a week. If people continue to show support, but maybe next week I'll continue to do it for uh, two um, two days next week. See, now it's running okay. Um, but yeah, we're doing it twice a week. Yeah, this is all on this laptop. I don't have a desktop, so I am running Photoshop, I'm streaming, and I'm running a video game and editing a video game all on this two-year-old laptop. Uh, yeah, this laptop is really freaking good. I see now we got good FPS here. Uh, I do want to desktop because I want to be able to like stream it at 60 FPS, which would be awesome. Hey, we got another follower. Um. But, I don't have the money for that. You know, basically the money you see on our... Yeah, I need a bigger st stock of beer and I need to eat some food. Uh, but, I honestly would do it longer, but uh, we have the thing to go to tonight. So that's kind of like my big thing. Otherwise, Cherish probably would go buy beer for me and then I'd like eat, I'd eat some food and continue working. But, we gotta leave in like 20 minutes. So, or now she says... Uh, it's going good. I'm sorry you guys literally just got on at the tail end of me being done. So, I want to thank everyone for watching. And uh, we have all this up on YouTube as well. I'm going to link my uh, YouTube to you guys so you can watch it. And all our other stuff as video on demand because I export all of it. So when this is done, uh, streaming, you can go there, you can check out all of our stuff. We've got our Dev Grind series, which is just like really short stuff I do each day, and then with these actual like development streams, start a playlist. We've got another follower, yay! 
This is all happening right at the end. Why? <laughs> no, but I really need to eat. And I need to get ready to go. <sighs> everyone's everyone's coming at right at the end. Um, but yeah, you can go here, check out our stuff. And uh, I'm going to be doing it again Tuesday, 4 p.m. Hawaii, 7 p.m. Pacific, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern. And then we're going to do it again Thursday, too. And you can follow us on social media. I've got links to all that on our profile. Uh, to, like, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You can see that I post about that uh, when we're going to do it. So, you know, I put up, like, a notice, like, an hour or two before we go live. And you have awesome people like Miss DGM, who's actually hosting for us. And we have a couple other people doing hosting as well. Um, but I need to wrap this up so we can go. So I want to thank you all for your time. And I'll see you guys Tuesday next week, 4 p.m. Hawaii, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Toodles.